Aliens. Why haven't we found any? My weirdos, the Fermi Paradox is the idea that if life is likely to exist, why haven't we found any evidence? Now, some of these theories on why we can't find any life is boring, and they're just like scientific theories that are pretty good assumptions. But other theories are really interesting, and some are downright disturbing. So today, let's go through a list of some of these strange theories. Number one is the Rare Earth Hypothesis, or the Great Filter. The Rare Earth Hypothesis is the idea that complex life is extremely rare and Earth is just a unique exception. This argues that the evolution of biological complexity anywhere in the universe requires a crazy coincidence. So basically it's just saying America is number one planet, Earth is number one planet in the solar system. If you don't like that, go to Uranus. The Great Filter, I kind of lumped this into the same one. The Great Filter basically says that there is a highly improbable step in the evolution of life or that civilizations just mostly fail to pass this step. So they're staying down in the non-sentient, dumb, barely life section of existence. Number two, we got the self-destruction theory. Um, this one's kind of dark. This basically goes off the idea that advanced civilizations tend to destroy themselves before achieving interstellar communication. Advanced civilizations might inevitably self-destruct before they can communicate or travel to other civilizations. This could be due to war, environmental destruction, or other factors. Basically, life destroys itself. Next, we got the Dark Force Theory. Now, the Dark Force Theory is probably the darkest one on this list. This is basically the idea that civilizations remain silent to not be detected by alien threats. Probably a better way to put it is that because intentions and technological development rates are unknown, alien races likely tend to fall into one or two camps. Shoot first or hide because the others are likely to shoot first. This basically plays in the idea that there's like a dark forest and aliens are animals out there hiding and there's a predator that could come and find your civilization and destroy you. To me, it's a really freaky idea because of the story All Tomorrows. This is like a weird science fiction novel about basically humanity getting invaded by a super advanced civilization called the Q. The Q basically see humans as animals or like insects. To humans, they are just completely godlike. Like we can't even operate on the same level as them we are like ants to them and they basically come in and they're like we're going to use you as livestock and humans are like no let's have a war and then there's war but not really because the Q just enslaves everybody they like take us and biologically engineer us into becoming complete different things people become like animals some become blocks in a pyramid it's terrible it's a horrible idea if there was a civilization that powerful would they do that to us Maybe, maybe we need to be quiet. I sure, that's probably the darkest view on any of this, so I like to not think that way. Next is the zoo hypothesis theory or the incubation theory. The incubation theory is the idea that advanced civilizations deliberately avoid contacting others until they reach a certain level of maturity. Basically, these advanced civilizations might look at Earth and they might see us as dinosaurs at this point. You know, if they're really far away, they could be looking back at us you know, a billion years in the past, so we look like dinosaurs roaming. And they might even be like, well, these things could become sentient, but right now they're dinosaurs and they won't become sentient for a really long time. And maybe we even, like, evolved quicker than they thought we would have. Guys, we're, we're cool now. We are only destroying certain... Moving on. The zoo hypothesis theory, I kind of just lumped it into the incubation theory because it's pretty darn similar. The zoo hypothesis is that advanced civilizations know we exist, but intentionally avoid contacting us, just like the incubation theory, because they want to avoid, you know, messing with the creation of life on its own. This theory would assume that alien cultures exist in large numbers and have great reverence for independent natural evolution of life. And these alien societies would be doing this because the creation of the most diverse life would only be possible if they left us alone. Um, but there's also kind of a darker part of this theory, some think that our zoo, Earth, has a zookeeper alien thing. And this alien thing is observing us and wants to accelerate our morals and ethics to make us overcome the want to destroy ourselves and others around us. So they want us to stop having wars. They want us to stop 
thinking that they we should destroy everything around us. And basically our zookeepers, these alien things, would try to accelerate our morals through various experiments and tests. Perhaps like giving us nuclear capabilities. Anyways, once we develop the ability to be peaceful, then they will contact us. That's a pretty crazy thought because like imagine we're so prideful, we're like, yeah, we've created radio, nuclear capabilities, IKEA, but really, aliens are just giving us all of that. Because like how likely is it that we really came up with radio waves way back in the day when we didn't have computers? I don't understand it. People were just like, yeah, we can communicate using light. What? The early bird theory. This is basically the idea that humanity is early and we are one of the first plants to develop intelligent life. We're early to the party and since scientists think that Earth is about 13.8 billion years old and Earth formed 4.5 billion years ago, life on Earth began quite early in the cosmic term of things. Which I don't really know why we would assume that this amount of time is early because like the amount of time we know is all we know right now, so why would we consider ourselves early on the cosmic scale if this is all we've known? Anyways, conditions on life are rare, and the process leading to intelligent life are slow. Earth could be one of the first planets to develop advanced life forms. Just like you. Signal propagation issues. This is the idea that extraterrestrial signals are too weak, infrequent, and technology might just be completely different for us to detect what they're saying, or for them to detect what we're saying. We out here using radio waves, but the aliens got gorpal signals, and we're just not compatible, not quite. We don't have gorpal technology yet, but we will. Difficult galactic colonization. This is about how interstellar travel and colonization are far more challenging and expensive than we would assume. To me, that makes sense. You know, the universe is so vast. There's galaxies separated by millions or billions of light years. Honestly, this might be one of the most likely. There's like life out there, but space is so big that it doesn't even matter. We'll never reach each other or know about each other. And the longer we go without contact just supports the idea that faster than life travel is impossible and we're all just trapped in our own local bubbles. Alien presence on Earth theory. This is the idea that aliens have already visited Earth or are present, but it's not widely known or accepted. Or it's covered up. Yeah, anyways, they're chilling inside of Earth. Or... They are deep in the ocean. The abyss. Watch it. I don't, don't comment, I haven't watched the abyss. Go watch it, and then tell me you don't love that idea. It is wonderful. Super advanced, intelligent civilization. Don't want to deal with us. Go deep in the ocean. I know it would be hard. There is life on Europa. I hope there's life on Europa. That would be really cool. And that ocean would be really scary. Short lifespan of civilizations. This is the idea that advanced civilizations exist for a short period of time and then they just rarely overlap with others. And this kind of ties in with the self-destruction theory. Civilizations exist and then they destroy themselves or they you know, get destroyed by others, maybe the Q. Different forms of life. This basically means that alien life forms might be so different to us that we don't even recognize their presence or their signals or any communication they throw at us. I feel like this could go in the direction of like different dimensional beings and like the spooky wookies, like stuff exists in a way we don't understand. Maybe even here among us, maybe on Mars, but we can't even observe it or interact with it. That would be pretty sick. I really like, I didn't, this has nothing to do with it, but I love atmospheric beasts. The idea of atmospheric creatures up in the atmosphere flying around, the big jellyfish things, things floating in the atmosphere alive. I love it. I love the thought of it. I love you. Simulation hypothesis. We live in a simulation. This means we live in a simulation and extraterrestrial civilizations are either not part of it or are just simulated differently. They're not in our Sims game. We're in a really elaborate illusion. We're living in some sort of computer simulation created by alien overlords who make all the rules. They made the laws of physics. I'm upset that gravity is so heavy. It would be a lot easier if we could just, you know. All right, last one, resource allocation. This is the idea that aliens just don't really care. You know, they got stuff going on on their own planet. 
Um, some of their alien friends don't have Gorpal, and they should have Gorpal, so they are getting their resources and pooling them to protect their own planet, and they're not worried about what you're doing. They don't care that you're wearing your tinfoil hat. They don't care that we sent that big golden disc way out into space that almost there's no way anything's going to see that thing. And they don't care that we launched that big rocket a week ago. They just, they're taking care of their own. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. I have not posted a whole lot of long form content lately, but I really like doing this video because I thought it was super interesting. I just want to say thank you guys for 426,000 subs. Um, I don't deserve it, but thank you. If you like this video, consider subscribing. And if you want to help out the channel, there's one thing you can do for me. First of all, subscribe. But I just launched some merch. It's pretty sick. I got a lobotomy in 2004. Um, you gotta let everybody know. Cryptid hunting team. Me and the boys. This one's self-explanatory. Hollow Earth. You can see the Earth is hollow in this shirt. And in real life, there's giants there. And Kraken is real. A Kraken is real. Because the Kraken's real. Look at this thing. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, subscribe to get a lobotomy. And also uh, get you one of these bad boys because... You deserved it. You did, I mean, it was a big operation you underwent, and people deserve to know what you went through, and you should, you should get it. Thank you guys. Have a good one.